Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And to my honourable friend from Calgary, Mindapur, when pointing out that oil has been transited on the west coast of British Columbia without incident, it certainly is important to note that from 1972 till very recently, there was a moratorium, a ban on the movement of oil in large-scale tankers that applied to the very coast that this bill will now legislate. Uh, the the uh, moratorium was honored by provincial and federal governments over that whole period. I also want to make note that the terms oil, crude oil, and bitumen are being used interchangeably in this debate, which leads to, I'm afraid, some, um, uh, some assumptions that are incorrect. For instance, a previous Conservative speaker, uh, my friend from Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, claimed that everyone knows that pipelines are safer than trains. If you are transporting bitumen, the opposite is true. It is quite correct that no one should transport back in shale, the material that blew up in Lac Megantique, by train. I don't know how safe back in shale is by pipeline either. It's, an, it's a combustible, uh, violently combustible, unstable material based on fracking for oil. But bitumen by train can be transported as a solid. Virtually nothing can go wrong moving bitumen by rail. If it falls off the track and falls to a great depth below, crashing open in a valley, in a river, it would be a solid blob and could be removed by a backhoe. It couldn't have blown up. It isn't back in shale. So in the case of moving bitumen by pipelines, the process inherently makes a safe substance unsafe because they have to stir in about one-third a, a, a material they call diluent, which is basically just fossil fuel condensate, itself toxic, and makes bitumen mixed with diluent a substance that can't be cleaned up. And thus, it is completely backwards to claim that moving bitumen by pipelines is safer. It's the opposite. Honourable Member for Calgary, Midnapore. Well, I, I appreciate the, the comments from the Honourable Member, but I think that um, no incidents uh, means no incidents. Uh, I think that we could look to history and to regulation um, for a, a number of situations where there have been bans or moratoriums, and guess what? There were no incidents. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, uh, no A, therefore no B. That, that's illogical. Sometimes, you know, uh, B can mean A or C can mean A. It's it's uh, it's it's incorrect logic. The reality is that there was no, there were no incidents during during that time. Um, I, I certainly um, I, I appreciate the the alternative methods uh, as as proposed by the honourable member for transporting uh, di different forms of energy. Of course, oil and gas is very dear to me as the Member of Parliament for Calgary Mindapur, uh, as is the energy sector. And I'm, I'm very, very encouraged um, by uh, the new technologies that are coming available um, for the potentially safer transport uh, of, of energy, um, uh, the pucks that are being examined at present. You know, this, this is very exciting uh, information. And, and potential um, uh, possibilities for the future for the energy sector and therefore for Calgary and therefore for Alberta and therefore for Canada. So I certainly don't think that we can um, neglect uh, evaluating all different types of transport uh, for different energy sources. Um, but, you know, in conclusion, I, I simply don't buy that because uh, there was a moratorium, you know, this means that there were no incidences. Um, as I said, mor moratoriums take place um, all the time, bans take place all the time. This doesn't conclude that there... Okay.